Hi, this is Mark Weitzman. In this video, I want to um, discuss a uh, popular books on in the field of mathematics. Previously, I had done popular classic books that students should read, and I, I did all the um, physics ones that I have, or some of them, a small portion. And now I'd like to turn to uh, mathematics. Um, before I do that, I left out one classic book last time, Mr. Tompkins in paperback. Somebody mentioned it on the um, comments section, and I actually do own this book, and I actually have read it. And it's a, um, it's a classic book on, like, cartoon characters and how George Gamow tries to explain, you know, relativity, atoms, fusion, nuclear physics. So it was one of the first, it's a very old book, but it was one of the first... Let me see how old it is. It was first published, well, this is the republished. I think, you know, it goes back to the 30s or the 40s. But it is a classic, and I left that out, so I wanted to add that to start. And, um, and I'm going to also, um, so my, my outline for what I want to do today is I want to do... Um, Popular, sorry. Let's see if I can get this working. It was working, and now all of a sudden it's not working. Ha, huh, technology. Okay. Popular mathematics. Books. Not textbooks, but I guess that doesn't work anymore. I don't understand. So, um, first, you know, I just want to name a couple of authors. These are like, you know, whenever you see these people, you should consider them. One guy is named Devlin. He's a mathematician, I think, at uh, somewhere in California. I can't remember exactly where, whether it's Santa Barbara or UCLA. But he's a top-notch author. And then this Klein, not the mathematician Klein, but like the Morris Klein. He's a historian. He writes really, um, really long and... Um, excellent books on history, and he, he has some very popular books as well. There's this author, Nahan, who I have like five books later on. He writes all kinds of mathematics and engineering books. He's a prolific author. He has about 15 to 20 titles in his name. And he his books are always interesting to read. Some of them take a little bit of um, like calculus knowledge and you know linear algebra and everything, but he's well worth reading. Same thing, um, Stewart is another mathematician who writes a lot of uh, popular mathematics books. Peterson, Corner. Corner wrote a real excellent book on Fourier series as a textbook. Poundstone. Um, of course, there's Martin Gardner. And Conway and Stillwell. So these are like authors that you should always like look for. And then um, I want to start by reviewing the um, couple of mathematics classic books that I had last time and adding a couple of them to them. And then I want to go to I want to go to like specific theorems, conjectures, and problems. I'll have a lot of books in these areas. And then I want to talk, I'll have some books on, you know, history, philosophy, and biography. 
In the physics, I left out biography. I've, I, I've read and owned biographies on just about every top physicist of the 20th century, and, and um, I think everybody sort of knows who they are, you know, whether it's Feynman, Gelman, um, Pauli, Dirac, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, Bohr, you know, Oppenheimer, you know. So, you know, there's a lot of good biographies on all the physicists and, you know, I recommend reading as many as you're interested in. Um, part C is, um, you know, specific mathematical topics. It might not be on a specific theorem or a conjecture, but Then D, I have like general, really good mathematics books. General, um, popular math books. And E, I have sort of like essays, you know, general essays on mathematics. So with that, um, I'm going to get started. And um, let's see if I can get to where I need to go. Okay. So last time I started with, uh, you know, one of the all-time classics, which is sort of mathematics. It's mathematics, music, and art. But Godel, Escher, and Bach, I don't think I need to say anything more about this book. It's Really, uh, if you're interested in logic and you're interested in recursion and you're interested in art and music, this covers it all. And physics, Feynman diagrams and everything. It was written by the, um, the Pulitzer Prize winning author and the son of a Nobel Prize winner in physics. And then I mentioned the um, world of mathematics. This is an old four volume set, but it covers a lot of interesting areas in mathematics and um, I um, this was sort of like the first mathematics book I ever read it got me started when I was about 10 years old and um, I just read it from cover to cover and it, and it covers like pure mathematics topics in volume one like number theory and all of those things and then in volume two it covers things like relativity and scientific subjects and then in volume three, it goes to, and four, it goes to things like game theory and war and art and aesthetics. So it covers the whole world of mathematics, which is its title name. So I highly recommend it. Another classic book, this is a short one, is called A Mathemat Mathematician's Apology by G.H. Hardy. Hardy made this the famous statement that he loved number theory because it would never have any use. Of course, this was way before cryptography and all the things that he did and others did in number theory end up having tremendous uses. So that's another classic book. And then this is a controversial book, but it's a sort of Men of Mathematics by E.T. Bell. It's an old book. It was written in the 30s, and many people disagree with a lot of the um, conclusions. So um, take it for what it's worth. There, are, I'll... Later on, I'll get to a lot more recent books on biographies and things like that on mathematicians. But I included this because it's an old one and it's considered a classic. Now I, I want to go to um, part A on specific conjectures and problems. And if you read one book that I recommend, this is my favorite math popular mathematical book. It's called The P and the Sun, A Mathematical Paradox. And I wrote a review on Amazon. Let's see if it's still here. And the author thanked me for the review. Um, I wonder. I don't see my review anymore. I know I wrote one of the first reviews of this book. Maybe I didn't write it on Amazon. I just wrote to the author. But anyway, the book is on the Banach Tarski paradox. And this is the paradox that um, you can take a sphere and cut it up into like 10 different pieces and then translate and rotate them. 
and reassemble them into, you know, more than one sphere, maybe two spheres. And it seems totally contradictory and crazy, but it illustrates the fact that when you're dealing with non-measurable sets, real, um, real weird things can happen. Now, why do I really like this book? I really like this book because I wanted to read a, a technical book on the subject, and it was just like it starts talking about free groups and this and that. And even though I know a lot of group theory, I'm not that conversant with free groups and things like that. But he actually gives the whole proof step by step in a way that somebody who has no understanding of uh, advanced mathematics can, can follow. And he does it, you know, inch by inch. He goes to set theories and... And it's the best popular book I've ever um, seen where somebody takes a famous theorem and actually proves it in a way that nothing is left out. It's rigorous, but it doesn't have any math. If you look at the whole book, it's all words almost. It's all words and pictures. And yet it, it is a complete absolute proof, which is like I've never seen in another book. So I highly recommend this book. Um... Then the next book, there's a bunch of books that came out. I'm not, uh, I hope I didn't lose my internet. That's good. Okay. There's a bunch of books that came out on um, a few years ago on Riemann's hypothesis, you know, the famous theorem about all the zeros of the zeta function lying on the real line with real part one half. And this is one of them, and I'm not going to say that some are better than others or something. This was just one that I read. There's a few others. I think I even have another one in here. I don't always go in um, complete order. But if you're interested in the Riemann hypothesis, this is a, a place to start. Likewise, there's a whole bunch of books on Fermat's last theorem and everything. And this is another very popular one that came out a few years ago. So another place to start. And then um, this is a book on Kepler's conjecture. Um, Kepler's conjecture was um, the idea that the when you pack spheres into like a cart, you know, everybody knows how to do it when you pack oranges. But to prove that that was the, um, the most efficient packing in three dimensions, Nobody could prove it for like 400 years. And then it was proven at the end of the, uh, like 1998, I think it was proven. And um, this book describes the um, proof. Um, the next book, this is um, the problem that's addressed in this book. It's called Symmetry and the Monster. But there was a very long proof. No one person could read it all, and it involves like 1,500 papers, and it was proved over 30 years on the uh, classification of finite simple groups. And while doing this, they came up with the monster group, which is like the largest finite simple group. And it turns out that this has connections with string theory and all kinds of things, so it's a very interesting book and how they do it. If you're not familiar with this area, I think you'll find it very interesting. Um, the next book that I want to discuss is on the uh, Millennial Problems by Keith Devlin. Like I said, he's a really good author on mathematics. And the Millennial Problems are like seven great mathematical problems unsolved that um, they offer like a million dollar prize on each one. And it involves things, the Clay Institute, and it involves, you know, all these um great problems that are still unsolved. Some of them are like physics problems, like proving some kind of mass gap in the Yang-Mills theory. Then there's the P equal NP problem, and then five other problems that are discussed in this. So um, if you want to have a, a good read on, on seven great unsolved problems and try and get a start on winning a million dollars, this book might be useful. Uh, the next book I have is on Abel's Proof. A lot of people are familiar with Galois and how Galois proved that um, there were no solution algebra, there were no closed form solutions for algebraic equations of degree five and higher. 
The person who actually proved the specific case of this proof was his contemporary. His name was Abel, and he actually proved this first uh, before group theory was totally invented and everything by Galois. And he, um, like I said, the book here it says, a young Norwegian named Abel proved conclusively that algebraic equations of the fifth degree are not solvable in radicals. So this is a very interesting book to read if you're interested in um, Galois theory and group theory in general. Um, the next book I want to discuss is, you know, there, I think there are several books on the four-color theorem. As you know, the four-color theorem was resolved after a long period. It was resolved by a computer proof, and some people are still unhappy about it, but it's sort of the best we can have. So this is a book on, the, on this problem. Next book I want to discuss is on the uh, Poincaré conjecture. Um, Poincaré like, did all kinds of things in topology and everything. And um, this too was solved, I think, just at the turn of the century, like 2000 or 2001, by this Russian named Perlman. And um, so it's, it's a really... Um, it's a, it's a good book on topology and a lot of the stuff that Poincaré did. And I think the thing was resolved in like easily in five dimensions or higher, three and four dimensions. When you get to problems in geometry and topology, it's usually three and four dimensions that are the hard ones to solve. Okay. So going to a new area on um, you know history and philosophy and um, biographies. This was one of the first mathematics book I read. It, it was really interesting. It's by Klein. It's called The Loss of Certainty. And he talks about all kinds of things about how, how proofs aren't, we really don't know, and the axioms, and, and this whole thing with uh, set theory. It's, it's like a little shaky and everything. So this is an excellent read on um, philosophical problems in mathematics and you know, as it says, refuting the accepted belief that mathematics is exact and infallible, the author exact, examines the development of confl conflicting concepts of mathematics. So um, this is a short, excellent read. He has another book. This is a three-volume work. This is I linked to volume one, but they also have volume two and volume three. It's sort of like a three-volume history of mathematics from ancient thought to modern times. But it's very readable. And then another book for those who are into philosophy and everything. This is not an easy read, but you know it. It sort of really discusses what is mathematics really, and he he goes through all the um, possible things, Platonism, and and various other ways of interpreting and understanding mathematics. So. You might find that very interesting. Um, the next book, um, I left this out. This was another book on sort of the music of the prime, Riemann's theorem and Fermat's thing. So this is another book if you're interested in primes and prime number theory and Riemann's conjecture. Um, there's a series of books, there's three volumes on mathematical people and each one is sort of like an interview and a, bi a short biography about 20 pages each on each on all the top mathematicians in the 20th century and it's it's really interesting to read and it's like a three volume work like mathematical people and then there's more mathematical people and then there's like uh, another book he came out with, Fascinating Mathematical People, Interviews and Memoirs. So if you're interested just in reading like conversations with mathematics and they talk about what they did, how they did, what schools, how they learned, how they became famous and what they did and everything, really interesting uh, reading. Um, another very good book by a mathematician, Adventures of a Mathematician, just, I probably should have put this in the classics, but this is by Ulam, who worked on the atomic bomb project with Teller and um, did a lot on randomness, the Monte Carlo algorithm. This is sort of all Ulam's work. 
Um, the next biography I have is uh, The Man Who Knew Infinity by Ramanjan. And there's been a movie made on this guy and everything. And he's, it's unbelievable what a genius this guy. He was like, the way his brain worked is different than the way everybody else's brain worked. And he just knew the theorems and could just write them out without proofs. And sometimes 98% of the time they were right, but 2% they were wrong. But um, anyway, this has been made into a movie and um, I, just a fascinating individual. Um, another book that I think was is ma been made into a movie, A Beautiful Mind, biography of John Nash. Not as good as Ramon John, but still he was a top mathematician who became insane and then, then got back his sanity and was given a uh, Nobel Prize in economics. Um, there's several books on Johnny von Neumann. This is the one I read. There's a new book on Johnny von Neumann out. Uh, let me see if they list it here. Um, a book that came out like last year. So um, von, in von Neumann is a fascinating character. Not only was he a genius, but he was a party person. And he was a polymath in all the areas. He worked on hydrogen bombs. He worked on game theory. He worked on set theory. He worked on von Neumann algebras. He invented so many things. And um, he's like the Feynman of mathematics in a sense. And they, um, another book, this is a classic book on biography on David Hilbert, considered the top mathematician of the late 19th and early 20th century. And it was written by like a student of his who also became a mathematician, I believe, Constance Reed. So if you're interested in Hilbert, you can read this book. Um, the next book I want to talk about um, this is a book on um, Kurt Godel that came out a few years ago on incompleteness and everything. So if you're interested in logic and everything, this is a, a really uh, good place to start. And then there's my final like biography book. There's The Man Who Knew Only Numbers. This is on Paul Erdos, who used to like he would uh, live out of a suitcase and travel from one mathematician's home to another and he would do proofs and you know his specialty was in combinatorics and number theory and and um, he just proved so many things he was so prolific in that area okay so now i want to go to like you know more specific mathematical t topics um Martin Gardner is like a wonderful mathematical writer, and this book is on Penrose tiles to trapdoor ciphers and everything. So it's a lot of geometry in this and tiling of the plane. He wrote the Mathematical Games and Recreations column for Scientific American for a long time. So um, highly recommend all of his books. Um, then there's this interesting book. There's a lot of books like History of Pi. You know, you'll, you'll have like, they'll talk about all the developments and from the Greeks to, you know, proving that it's transcendental and, and everything. And I think this is a very short book actually, but let me look at the table of contents. Um, you know, the Greeks, the Romans, uh, Newton, Euler, Monte Carlo, Method, Transcendence, and Computer Age. So it's a short book, discusses progress made in understanding of uh, the number pi. This next book is, um, this guy did like a lot of work. If you really want to understand about geometry and 10 dimensional geometries and topology and its relation with string theory and everything, this is the book to do it. This guy, Yao. It's done significant work on all this stuff um, on Calibu Yao manifolds. And uh, this is one of the few books I could find on this topic. It's probably, it's not that detailed mathematically. It is a word book, but it's a little bit more like technical, I think. Um, you know, but it, it, it does go through a lot of stuff. And um, like I said, I don't think there's much mathematical equations in this. Um, another book that's sort of like a classic is Conway's book on numbers and he discusses all the possible kinds of numbers you know 
Um, and he invented a lot of these numbers. Let me get to the table of contents here, but he uh, sometimes he invented like all these numbers, and you have primes and um, the imaginary numbers, the transcendental numbers, and then he has infinite and infinitesimal numbers, and all kinds of things that that he invented and he uh, he wrote about. So this is a very good book to learn everything about numbers and the different types of numbers. Um, the next book I have um, is written by an author, Nahin. He writes, he's written about 15 to 20 books. He writes really good detailed books on specific topics. Often about, many of them are in mathematics, a few of them are in engineering. Some of them concern probability, some of them concern all kinds of different areas. You know, they list three here, like computational, dice, probability. But the level of this book is like sophomore level mathematics. You have to really have an understanding of calculus. And he doesn't go much beyond calculus, but he really, you know, you'll need some pencil and paper sometimes to follow along his arguments. Um, Because he does all kinds of related... um, things and he calculates things when needed you see like you know he's not gonna like he simplifies it but it's it's still you have to know some math to read his books I've got about five of his books I think right now I'll go through all of them like this is another uh, Nahan book that he wrote on on the constant E Euler's famous number and everything so he'll have like how E occurs and everywhere where it occurs and um Again, you have to have some calculus to really get the full thing out of out of these books. But um, it's not a textbook. It's not as bad as a textbook. And then he's got a book on the imaginary number I. And then I, I have another book where he's got Chases and Escapes. This is a really good book on uh, pursuit and, and um, evasion. And, you know, it solves a lot. I'm not that into puzzles. You'll notice I don't have that many puzzle books and everything, but he solves some famous puzzles in this book, and uh, but some of it involves sophisticated mathematics. Um, another book on like by another author, Havel, on a specific mathematical constant gamma, you know, and again, this is sort of like you have to know some mathematics to follow um, this book. Uh, there's going to be equations and everything. Um, let's see, another book. Uh, this is a book who um, wrote some fiction and nonfiction books on Feynman, uh, Drunkard's Walk. It's about the randomness and everything and random walks, and he's a pretty good writer. And he's got uh, expertise in financial markets and probability, so... Um, this is another book on a similar topic of randomness and everything. He's an excellent author, Peterson, and he discusses all kinds of uh, aspects of it. Okay. Um, this book, I'm not sure it belongs in this section, but it's really, I really like it. William Poundstone wrote a couple of books on, this one's on Prisoner's Dilemma and it, it, he has chapters on von Neumann, game theory, the puzzle of the bomb. So it's a very interesting read, very easy and interesting. And then he also wrote a similar book on the recursive universe where he talks about the game of life and various things that Conway did and math, cellular automa and everything. So these two books sort of like go together. Um, the next book, this is a book by Stilwell, who writes some very good mathematics textbooks. This book really discusses uh, infinity and set theory. So if you're into the axiom of choice and large cardinals and uh, all these things, you have to have some probably knowledge of set theory and logic. Otherwise, it will be difficult to follow. He does give the background, but he goes pretty fast. But it's a real good popular book covering all these topics. Um, the next series of books are things like on group theory and patterns and all kinds of things. This is a 
a good book that I really liked on equations and um, symmetry. And he weaves in various things on group theory and everything. Um, see, the next book I have is another book called Group Theory in the Bedroom. I like the title of the book. But it's also a pretty good um, book discussing group theory on a non-technical level. I think it's non-technical level, but... Um, you know, mattress flipping and all things. He has good analogies. Um, a lot of different things. This is a, an interesting book by Casti. He's another good author on the most famous mathematical problems of all time. I think this, I don't quite remember what exactly they were. Probably the continuum hypothesis and a few other like, you know, real top-notch problems in mathematics. Um, and then here's a book that I really like. I got this book for one reason. I could never solve Rubik's Cube, and I wanted to see how to solve it, but I didn't, and this book goes through the whole detail, step by step, of how to solve Rubik's Cube, and it goes through all the group theory you need to understand what to do, and he gives specific instructions. So if you want to solve Rubik's Cube and you've never solved it, this book will enable you to solve it. Follow the instructions and you'll uh, you'll get there. Um, but it also discusses a lot of things on permutations and combinatorics and, and groups and everything. So, highly recommend it. Um, every year, there's a book that comes out called The Best Writing on Mathematics. And it's a bunch of essays. Um, it's usually about 400 pages, maybe about 20 essays. They're like 20 pages apiece. Some are better than others. Um, I would look at the reviews, if there are any. I don't even see for this one, but like I read the one from 2010. But it comes out every year if you want to read like essays on the best mathematical writing. Um, so I'm finishing up here with general essay books. And, and there's so many of these. These are the ones that I got. They're on various different topics. Usually I bought it like I know Mark Kack is a famous mathematician on probability and, and other things. So I bought this book on discrete thoughts. And they, they discuss, you know, all the things that he did in uh, combinatoric statistics, economics. And um, so you just get, you know, usually a couple of mathematicians' famous perspectives. Um, this is another one, Conversations, Mind, Matter, and Mathematics. Um, I'm less okay. So here I'm very familiar with Alain Connes. He's the one who's done things on um, non-commutative geometry, sort of like another approach to string theory and quantum gravity. So I bought this because I wanted to see what he says on things. Another book. I think I have two books, but I only put one here on on music and mathematics. This is by uh, Edward Rothstein. So if you're interested in the relationship between music and mathematics, this is a good book. And then uh, my final two books. This is another essay book, Indiscreet Thoughts. Uh, this is another mathematician that I sort of recognize. Um, and then the final book is another one by Conius on Triangle of Thought. So these are all the um, books I have. There are many, many, many more. And... Um, you just got to pick a topic that you're interested in. You know, I don't remember going over. I seem to have skipped. Yeah. I left out a bunch of books. Um, I'm going to go just do them now on the fly. Um, okay. This is a really important book that I left out. So this is um, one of the first popular books that I read by Keith Devlin. Um, and um, let me see if I can get another one. Ah, it's, it's a real pain to do this. Well, I'll 
see if I can search inside here. Okay, here. Anyway, he writes about, it was written in like 1990 and it's been revised and everything, but it, he discusses all these things that have happened in recent mathematics that's understandable, you know, not stuff like the 10th inaccessible cardinal number or something like that, but he has all the things on factoring, secret code, sets, number systems. It's all easily understandable on famous problems and things that have been where progress has been made recently. That's why he writes like it's a new um, golden age. And then um, I want to talk about another book. Sorry that I left these out. Um, Love and Math, I think this is. This is a Russian mathematician who now teaches, I think, at the University of California, San Diego. He's from Russia. And um, he works a lot on the intersection between advanced mathematics and physics and geometry. So um, I highly recommend this book. Um, tells his story and um, it's, it's very interesting. Um, then let me put in another book because I left out books by Stuart. Stuart has like many books on mathematics. This is one that I really like. Um, it's the same thing, sort of like Keith Devlin's book, and it's very similar. And he's also a very, very good um, author. And um, he's got another book called, uh, well, he's got like 20 books. If you visit his Amazon page, you'll see all kinds of books. Um, Foundations of Mathematics. I'm looking for the one on game set and math. Anyway, he's a great writer and uh, well worth reading all of his books. He's got a lot of technical books too. Okay, can't find the one on game set and math. Oh, there it is. So, um, Here's another book I recommend by uh, Stuart. Okay. And um, then another one I want to talk about. Uh, this, is a, this is by the guy who wrote the book on Fourier analysis. Very good book. He's got a very good book on pleasures of counting. Why won't this work? Well, won't let me go in there. But um, this is a, it's a long book, I think. It's a longer book. And it just has things, all kinds of things where counting and everything becomes important and numbers and everything. Um, so um, I left out a, a few more, but those are the main ones, I think. Hopefully I didn't leave out anything more. Um, okay. So um, next time I'll come back and I'll try and do um, another video on... Um, all kinds of uh, books on engineering, computers, um, weapons, atomic bombs, and um, public policy. So um, and that will probably finish my, um, my series on popular books. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.